If you lie to me in the daytime, don't worry. In the night, I'll, I'll catch you. You, you can you succeed in the daytime. You can succeed. But at night, when I start that, my, my movement, he will, he will remind me. Say, that man that came, he lied to you. He lied? Yes. Then if I say he lied, he will expose you more. <laughs> you know, someone came to my office and was saying so many stories. I said, you can deceive me in the daytime, not in the night. When I get back home, I will know if you are saying the truth. Then you will say, I'm actually lying. You don't need to. There's no need for you to go and check this thing. Now, if you know how many people come to deceive you in one day, you will know that you need a way of accessing what is in their heart. And it came to pass one day, I went for a meeting and I saw that evangelist. That was my pastor's pastor. And I prayed to God and I said, Lord Jesus, let me not end up like this man. Do you know how powerful that man was? Uh, huh. I'm talking of a man that one man and he breaks the yoke of witchcraft among the people. One man. But the man could not discern that the woman he brought to minister for him she was a high priestess in the way of divination. And as she began to preach and say the things she was saying, the demons that accompanied her began to invade the building and the madness that was taken away from that 12-year-old girl, he came back. And you know what? When that madness came back the second time, that man was not able to help her again till the girl died. Now that's why there are people that preach here are not many. A lot of people have insulted me publicly and said that I'm proud. Let us just be serving God. Eh? If you know how Jesus likes his people, the people he died for, if you know how he loves them, you will, you will discipline yourself as a pastor. Oh. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. You know, it is customary when the mother of the house becomes pregnant, she delivers a child. Normally goes to the village to get a helper. If you are a mother here, you can connect with what I'm talking about. You might identify by a raise of hand. All right, so you, we normally, you look for your auntie's child, you look for your relative's child, bring home to help you. You will need the gift of discernment of spirit to know who can stay in your house. As we progress in the lecture, you will have adequate understanding of what I am talking about. The scripture says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Now, a lot of ladies in this place may have been swayed by people with this kind of ability. When you showed up, a, a young lad just comes your way and he's so fluent with words and uh, Hallelujah. Now, so, you see, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. So you might go to the village and you get your auntie's child to come help you out because she just delivered. And if you don't have the ability to probe beyond the, her innocence, she looks so innocent and so wonderful. And that's the reason why. And, and your auntie must have recommended her highly that she's the quiet one. The rest are stubborn. This one is quiet, will take instructions, will obey you, will not bring trouble into your home. And you take her word for it without discerning. You see, the, the judgment that you used to bring her into your home was face value. And you are likely to regret that decision if you have no means to journey beyond face value into the source point. Are you there now? So he said the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. So discernment would travel into the heart. So any, any ability of God that can make you see the heart of men is discernment. Because if you can see the heart of a man, you can now know his motive. You see, motive is silent. And somebody can come to your house smiling. And the person is so nice. And you begin to trust the person. But maybe when you go on your knees, the gift of discernment of spirit kicks in and you can see beyond the smiles and know the motive for which the person is coming around your life. Uh, these gifts are the resources that God has made available to us in order to make up for our insufficiencies. If God knew that we have no need for these gifts, he would not make them available. He said his words were softer than oil, yet were there drawn swords. So, you see, there was war in his heart, yet his words were like butter. There were, there were drawn swords in his heart, yet his words were softer than oil. 
it is very possible for people to put up a show around you and God help you if you do not discern anyone who has this description and is making a headway into your life. It means the future of that association, that relationship, is going to be laden with a lot of piercing because eventually the substance that is locking in the heart will begin to find expression. So the gift of discernment of spirit gives us the privilege to travel beyond face value, to travel beyond what is happening on stage, to travel beyond what is presented and what they want you to see. Do you realize that Satan will be totally disarmed? He will be totally powerless. If one, two people are planning to come and poison you, are you there? You had a way of hearing their discussion. You had a way of seeing the potion, the poison. You had a way of knowing how they intend to apply the poison, either to your food or to your drink. If you have as much as seen that plan, there is no way that plan can work for you. You know, the Bible says in vain is a snare placed in the sight of a bed. In vain. Once the bed sees the trap, when you are putting the trap, the bed cannot fall to that deception. The bed will never yield to it. So if we have a means by which the veil that covers the unseen world is lifted, there are many traps that we are not going to fall into. So that's what the gift of this mental spirit does. It takes away the veil that covers the unseen realm. I remember once upon a time we were invited for a meeting to preach in Lagos. That was the first invitation I had to preach in Lagos. And it was, I was working in Kano then, so we took night bus, traveled all the way, went to Lagos. And you know, we in the north, especially if you're you in Kano, and you have stayed there for some time, there's a way we dress. May the Lord give you understanding. Okay, most of you have not left this town before, so you don't know how someone that is in Kano will dress. So there's a way we dress. So that was how we came. We came looking like people from the north to Lagos. The moment the, my guests saw the way we were dressed, he didn't allow me to preach in the conference again. Yes, I came from Kano. He, he, he pretended as if he didn't invite me to come because we're wearing this kaftan that is. So on the last day of the meeting, when the meeting had ended, so he now said that there's one person from Kano here let us give him 15 minutes to talk to us. So I came from Kano to come and talk for 15 minutes. But that's, that's not a problem. My, my father and the Lord will always say that it doesn't take God eternity to do that which is eternal. He will always tell us that. So I took the microphone and for 15 minutes, I brought the counsel of God. Before I preached that message, I, I've been praying in tongues throughout the whole conference. So the bullet was, yeah, was ready. I, I delivered it for 12 minutes. He said, he, he did like this, continue. He said, continue. I know. I, 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 I refuse. I refuse to go down. Okay. I close it. Then I went to the man and told him that ah, the only person that preached was that man from Kano, and you didn't allow him to preach. I, okay, it was his people that went to him and told him that because he was looking on the outward appearance. He said, that's not how God sees. I do not look on the outward countenance. If you see the things that Samuel saw that baffled him, he saw the height of his stature. He saw his countenance. He said, no, that doesn't impress me. What impresses me, what I see is what? They have. So the discernment of spirit takes you beyond the stature, takes you beyond the biceps, takes you beyond the beauty, takes you beyond the waist. It takes you into the heart. The gift of discernment of spirit makes us see as God sees. Someone came to my office, then I started seeing his right hand white. And whenever I see that, it means don't shake. That the hand, something is on the hand. If they use it to shake you, then um, you will have yourself to blame. So the person tried to shake, I will just say. No, you can't shake with one hand now. You can't shake. The, I'm not interested, so keep the hand away. And the three times he attempted, when he, he tried to make me excited, then he was on his own because I've already seen that. <laughs> you may not know how vulnerable we are until you begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Then you come back home and ask yourself, what if I had no insight about this intention? I went to see my father in the Lord and he, he, he told me that in a certain wedding that he went to officiate. After joining the couple, he came from the pulpit and sat on his seat. And one man came from the back and came to him and shook him. The moment he shook the man, something began to travel from the man's hand. That is, he could feel one energy. And when the thing reached here, he said, come on, stop there. Now, so he used power to solve the problem. I, I will tell you about power, what power can do. That was, it was power he used to solve that problem. You see, they, are you with me? Uh, 
what the revelational gifts will do is that it will reveal the thing to you. So you will now have the wisdom on how to avoid it. But if you're already in it, we need what? Power. Terrible human beings. Terrible people. Terrible people. I, I was at the airport and I met one guy saying, hey, how are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. That when he just shook me, I just saw that two days ago, he was with somebody and castigated me in that country. <laughs> uh, sometimes, when you see things like that, don't just laugh. Pretend, don't make the person know that you know. But because it's a secret, the Holy Spirit is trying to bring you into secret matters. But you see, that information is to give you insight that, see, stay far away from this man. You don't know how deep the heart of a man is. Very deep. If you lie to me in the daytime, don't worry. In the night, I'll, I'll catch you. You, you can you succeed in the daytime. You can succeed. But at night, when I start that, my, my movement, he will, he will remind me, say, that man that came, he lied to you. He lied? Yes. Then if I say he lied, he will expose you more. <laughs> you know, someone came to my office and was saying so many stories. I said, you can deceive me in the daytime, not in the night. When I get back home, I will know if you are saying the truth. Then you'll say, I'm actually lying. You don't need to. There's no need for you to go and check this thing. Now, if you know how many people come to deceive you in one day, you will know that you need a way of accessing what is in their heart. A woman in our midst, I don't know if she's here today, the number of people are so much, so I, but I cannot see her in a glance. I don't know if she's here. She, she told me that, oh, her daughter is about to get married and uh, she wants to bring uh, her daughter to me for blessing. I said, that's a great idea. Then we're still in the other place. And then she now ran home and brought her daughter to me. We were praying in the hall. So when she came with the daughter, I approached them by the door. And when I looked at the daughter, I said, ah, madam, this girl is dead now. You know, <laughs> she, she was wondering what his pastor saying again, that I like behaving strange. I don't like behaving strange. You have not been with someone that sees into the realm of the spirit. That's why. I said, this one is dead now. Said, are, you, are you serious? I said, I'm very serious. Okay. Then an amp rebuked the spirit of death. She fell down. Fell down and then they this black in her eyes went up. It was only white for 30 minutes. I said, is this how a normal person is? The deliverance took 20 minutes. It was when we finished the deliverance. I now shook her and said, okay, this handshake is your certificate for marriage. Go and marry now. She would have died the first week she entered into her matrimonial home. Meanwhile, it's one of the people she went to tell that I'm getting married that struck her with that spell. Oh, you go around, you, 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 you get a job, and then you, go, you start from Urukum. Every house you enter, I say, you don't come, you don't come, you don't come. <laughs> Meanwhile, some people have four children that have graduated with better grades than yourself, and they are, are you, waiting come. Ah. <laughs> Instead of her to just marry, let them see it on Facebook. It, it will be an announcement to all your relatives that you have crossed. She went carrying cards, see? Every, all the neighbors have to know that. The gift of discernment of spirit is a means through which we can diagnose people's problems so that we can, what? Help them. My pastor told me about a man. The man came, I'm selling a business proposal to my pastor. I mean my pastor in the village. Okay, so everything the man will say, ah, by God's grace, Aye. in the name of Jehovah. So that was any he will punctuate with Jesus' name, punctuate with by Jehovah's grace, punctuate. And uh, my pastor now invested in a lot of money into uh, the business that the guy brought to him, and that was the last time he ever saw the man. So it means that the guy was a thief in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he was a swindler that that succeeded in Jesus' name. <laughs> the gift of discernment of spirit, <laughs> it takes us into uh, the economy of the hearts of men. The moment that money was deployed, released, the guy has vanished till today. We are not even sure if he's still alive, but that's not the problem. He vanished. That's the problem. While he was making the proposal, it was in Jesus' name, by God's grace. Ah, the Lord forbid it. God will forbid it. Oh, oh my God, the Lord Jesus. Satan is the king of deception. And he knows that he's going to have more access into our companies if he's transformed to an angel of light. Are you there? You know, in, in Sunday school, when we were little children, uh, the Sunday school teachers did not do a very good job because they depicted Satan with two horns. 
and red tongue. I've been looking for that individual till now and I've never seen him. <laughs> I don't know. How many of you, I, even in the spirit, I don't know. <laughs> Has Satan never come to you in that mood? You know, so, uh, we, we grew up expecting to see a double horned man that is very fierce with muscles. He knows you will not accept him if it comes that way. So maybe that angel, that light you saw. Okay, let me show you one scripture in which Satan uh, is transformed into an angel of light. Um, Acts chapter 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Susan. It was a prayer meeting they were going. And many of us will think that Satan will not want to be present in a prayer meeting. But it was a prayer meeting they were advancing into. And this lady that was possessed with the spirit of divination came for the prayer meeting. And her history is that she brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Satan has been transformed into an angel of light. It's as if he's speaking by prophecy. See, if you, if, you, if you look at this presentation at face value, you will say, okay, God is trying to bring credibility to the ministry of Apostle Paul. Notice that her prophecy was not even directed at a church member. It was directed at the head of the apostolic coalition. All right? You know the kind of leverage and access the lady is going to have, the kind of promotion she's going to have once Paul adopts her, once Paul brings confirmation, once Paul brings endorsement that this is a prophet. You know what I would have done to the fellowship? She would have been the one controlling the fellowship with her divination. And there are many ministries like that that have been trapped by divination. You know, my pastor in the village told us a, um, an experience he had. His own pastor, who was the evangelist that brought revival to our people. All right? Uh, he was a very strong man. They say he used to do dry fasting. Dry, no food, no water, and he's preaching every day, leading prayer every day, leading prayer every day, preaching every day, continuing his dry fast. He was a very powerful man of God. I remember I was told by my pastor how that this man, there was a mad girl. I don't know how she became mad. And during his dry fasting um, days, the days he does his dry fasting, he moved around the town and saw the girl mad and slapped her on the head. And that's how her sanity came back. The parents of the girl, because she, had, she, she was like 12 years old, the parents of the girl dashed him the girl. Have you heard of such things before? I, I thought it was in, it was those days they used to dash human. You see, you, he slapped her on the head and the spirit. So I'm talking about a very powerful man of God. But unfortunately, this man of God now went and brought a woman who um, claimed to be a prophet, brought her to minister. And while that woman obviously with the spirit of divination. And while she was ministering, the madness that he casted from that girl, that madness came back on that girl. And that was how that ministry, it was a powerful Pentecostal ministry. That was how that ministry started dying till he died. Because of one, one entrance of a spirit of divination on the altar they had built with sweat and prayer for years. And it came to pass one day, I went for a meeting and I saw that evangelist. That was my pastor's pastor. And I prayed to God and I said, Lord Jesus, let me not end up like this man. Do you know how powerful that man was? Uh, huh. I'm talking of a man, that one man, and he breaks the yoke of witchcraft among the people. One man. But the man could not discern that the woman he brought to minister for him was a high priestess in the way of divination. And as she began to preach and say the things she was saying, the demons that accompanied her began to invade the building. And the madness that was taken away from that 12-year-old girl, he came back. And you know what? When that madness came back the second time, that man was not able to help her again till, she, till the girl died. Now that's why the people that preach here are not many. A lot of people have insulted me publicly and said that I'm proud. Let us just be serving God, eh? Let all of us be just be serving God. Do the one you know. If you know how Jesus likes his people, the people he died for, if you know how he loves them, you will, you will discipline yourself as a pastor. Oh. Are you there? All right. So I've seen, 
I, I've been instructed. I've been properly instructed at pe by people that have encountered God and people that have had spiritual experiences. And that is the way I live my life. The reason why I live my life the way I do. Now, we need to be equipped because these gifts of the Spirit, you don't just need them for crusade. You need them in your office. You need it in your business. You need it in your family. You need it when you are going to the market. If God knew that we will not need to discern, he will not give us the ability so to do. So in this scripture, this lady was masquerading to be a prophet because Satan is likely to gain more if he succeeds in his business of impersonation. He's transformed into an angel of light. Now, you will notice that eventually when she began to say these things, the Holy Spirit in Paul had not yet risen. That means that she went scot-free without being detected for a while. And no matter how you want to interpret this scripture, the great apostle Paul was deceived for a while. Right? I've read it again and again. I've tried to picture it. I've tried to envisage it. You know, I told you that the gifts of the Spirit only operate when the Holy Spirit comes himself to operate it through you. Now, for many days, she made these statements and the Holy Spirit did not rise in Paul. That means they accepted what the lady was saying to be true to be from God. And just before the damage was done, she entered into the mood again. And she began, that time, the Holy Ghost now stood up in the heart of Paul. And can, let me show you the experiential description of, of what uh, the art of discernment was. Verse 18. And these did she many days, but Paul being grieved and turned to the spirit, I command thee in the name of of Jesus Christ come out of her and he came out the same hour. So the manifestation of discernment in the spirit of Paul was like an inner grief. It means the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to you how he feels about what is going on. Whenever you shake someone and you lose your peace, don't shake again. The Holy Ghost is saying you will not, you will not prosper relating with this person. As you do what you do in the office, on the streets, in the market, you need to be alive to the Holy Ghost reaction in your spirit man. So she was prophesying or masquerading as prophecy. She was manifesting, manifesting until the Holy Ghost in Paul arose with a detestable dimension of grief. And Paul knew that the spirit of God in him was not bearing witness to the utterance that the lady was making. And he charged, not the lady, but what? The spirit. You need to pay attention to how the Holy Spirit in your vessel is responding to a particular matter. It is an attempt to deliver your head. It's an attempt to, to safeguard your life. I just came back from one nation not too long ago. And, and the nation I'm talking about, the theologians of that nation, the keepers of truth in that nation came together and said they need to rewrite the Bible to accommodate the realities of society. You, 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 might, you might want to ask, how did they get to that point? People that were not born again went to Bible schools, graduated with degrees, did masters, did PhD, became authorities in the educational system and turned the entire spirit of the whole ministry. And that, that ministry has a lot of authority in that nation. Their current initiative is to put money together to rewrite the Bible and to remove some aspects that are offensive to the current day culture. How did they get to that point? They passed, the people survived, escaped the checks. And there was no discernment available. And the only way, meanwhile, just imagine what happens if Apostle Paul did not detect this lady. He says, God, the body of Christ from occultic invasion. There is no time greater than this, than occultic people want to invade the body of Christ and to have a voice that people respect. And that's why in the discipleship of this day, there is no way we can leave you without having basic discernment. And one of the prayers we're going to pray tonight is that the capacity for discernment will well up in your heart like a spring of water. Yeah. Acts 8, 14 to 23. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid there their hands 
on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So this guy, are you there with me? Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? Now this Simon, this guy, he pretended as if he gave his life to Christ and Philip the evangelist embraced him. Philip the evangelist was running the ministry in an evangelical way. Everyone that comes for altar call, Philip believes that they are born again. And he is included into the choir. He's included, included into the workforce. Included here. Because they came for altar call. So witches too will come for altar call. Too. Necromancers will come for altar call. And say, oh. The office of the evangelist is a very powerful office. The office of the, ev the evangelist is a marketer. It's marketing the product of salvation. So he's a very powerful person. So the evangelist has his competencies in the area of power because he's a marketer. He can, he's highly explosive. He can rattle the foundation of a city. He can draw attention through miracles, through wonders, through signs. But you see, the evangelist is zero on discernment. He's what? Zero on discernment. Now, if I just pray the Holy Spirit <coughs> will allow us to continue in this lecture. Then I will show you the combination. An evangelist, these are the competencies that he has. These are the competencies that the prophet has. This is the shape of the apostles. This is the shape of the teacher. This is the shape of uh, the pastor. Now, so the evangelist is strong. And you can tell from uh, Acts chapter um, 8 verse 5, 6, Philip was powerful. Philip was explosive. But Philip could not tell whether the people he was dealing with were of God or of the devil. He took another office. They invited the apostles to come from Jerusalem. You see, in the office of the apostle, the office of the apostle is rich in discernment. He is the strongest agency for quality control in the body of Christ. And because of that, his office is high in discernment. Are you still with me? High in discernment. So the evangelist is very powerful, but he can be easily deceived. And that's why, okay, I don't want to go into that. That's just, I've, I've told you, he's very powerful, but what? It can be easily deceived. But the and I'm not saying this because I'm in the apostolic. No. The office of the apostle is the richest in discernment because he's a quality control officer. is one of the um, nets that God puts in place to protect the body of Christ. <clears throat> and whenever an apostle begins to teach, it's easy to know what is fake, what is real. If you listen to an apostle for a while, it will be difficult for you to listen to any other preacher. Is that true? It's not his fault, though. That's how the, the grace is. And I'm not saying it because I'm one. All right? All right, so I'm just telling you the way it is. He's a defender of the body of Christ. They brought the apostles from Jerusalem. Philip was saying, we have a great harvest. So many thousands of people have given their life to Christ. So the apostles are foundational ministers. They're the ones that establish the interest of God in territories. If an apostle passes through a town or is among the people, uh, Satan will need to stay outside. You know, uh, 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 Paul says that when I have left, then grievous wolves will come, not sparing the flock. Those wolves cannot come when Apostle Paul is there. That's the definition of spiritual covering. There are some things that will not be able to come around your life. And even if they come, they can't prosper. What they came for, they can't do it. It's impossible. So they are defenders of the faith. And because of that, they are rich in the capacity to discern. So this guy now shows up. When he saw that, uh, Peter will lay his hands and someone will receive the Holy Ghost. The guy now say, wow. Because he was not born again. He was looking for more tools to add to his feather, feathers to add to his cap as a sorcerer. He said, I've never seen this time. This thing shouldn't be free now. See? Take money. Give me the power. So that when I... You know, if, he, if he, he's giving money, it means he will take interest when he's doing his own. Next verse. This is what Peter says. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with. Now, you will see the difference between word of knowledge and discernment of spirits in a moment of time. He said, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Huh? Thou hast, see, he has gone into the gift. He said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. That means he's not born again. Do you know that evangelist Philip could not discern that that man was not born again? He said, this thing we are doing, you don't have a part in it. You don't have a lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right. In, this guy enters his heart instantly. 
Meanwhile, Philip could throw power. People would fall, but he could not see the heart of men. He embraced and is the most. The man was becoming influential in the ministry. <laughs> he said, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Next verse. Repent therefore that, that this thy wickedness. Therefore, of this thy wickedness and pray to God, if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven. This man is his heart. Can you see that? Next verse, next verse, next verse. He said, for I perceive. The thing is, he walking. That thou art, art in the gall of bitterness. See, when, when Evangelist Philip came into the territory and began to take his customers, the man had been bitter against Evangelist Philip. But Evangelist Philip was not aware. He called him. He wanted, see, ah, you are repenting. Evangelist took him to Facebook and said, this is the more is now of Jesus. And then the man said, praise the Lord. I don't know what happened to us these days. Anything that happens to us is on Facebook now. The evangelists are taking the man on Facebook and endorsed him that he was now a born again man and that was a gallant entry for him into the body of Christ. Everybody now sees him in the eye of a brother. But when the apostles came from Jerusalem, Peter said, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. You know what gall is? That gall bladder, that bitter thing, that if you don't extract it very well, the whole meat will become, you see, you see, there's a goal of bitterness inside of you. I can see the goal of bitterness. So there's no drama you are doing here that, that is positive. I can imagine that Evangelist Philip was, was there with his mouth open wide because he was totally impotent in designing this treasure. You are in the goal of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Your soul is still locked on iniquity. It was in that day that that man was exposed. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter. Thank you.